YouTube. It's Aiden slash Just Aiden. We're going to talk to you guys today about diagnosing valve problems. So I get questions a lot about, hey, my valves are like noisy, clanky, whatever you want to whatever you want to say, what can I do to fix it? Should I just take it to a tech? It's like, yeah, sometimes the answer is you probably should take it to someone who knows what they're doing and has the tools, but there's a lot of things you can at least diagnose yourself, if not fix. And usually the answer is put more lube on it, but let's go over the, uh, the ways to check that. So I got um, the 112 valve section here. Um, not super bad, it's not clanky, just kind of loud. Um, but they're well oiled. These play actually very well. I like these a lot um, for rotors. I just don't like how they do legato because they're kind of snappy. Um, but they seal pretty well and they play pretty well. Not a lot of problems with these. But let's go over what the problems they do have. So pretty much the first thing um, that you're ever going to notice is slop in a valve. Like if you press something and instead of moving the valve, something else moves first. And it's not something you can always see right away. So the way I check this is by holding the stop arm. This stop arm is this guy that, oops, that stops against the uh, bumpers. Hold that down so it's against the, well in this case, the open bumper, and then move the lever. Ooh, look at that. So we got a whole bunch of slop there. Um, you can see here. That's moving a good quarter of an inch before anything happens. And of course you let it go, it'll move. But all of this, it gets taken up and then the valve moves. So you might not notice that right away, but there's just a good amount of not moving in this. And of course if you hold it the other way, same thing. So what is the problem here? Well if we check the ball joints, just moving them by themselves, kind of isolate them. Now the ball joints are in pretty good shape. They're oiled right now so they're not noisy or clanky. The saddle right here holding the trigger is completely worn out at one of the ends. I'm not sure which end, um, but it doesn't really matter. You can see the movement right here. It moves a ton. And for this, really nothing you can do about it except for get a whole new trigger assembly probably. Um, in this case, I just make sure this is well oiled or it'll clank. So I put some nice heavy stuff on this and Instead of taking up the slop, um, I treat the symptom by just making sure it doesn't make a lot of noise. Um, otherwise, you know, this plays okay. This tr um, this paddle is just in a horrible place. That's the, really the biggest problem with this. Let's check the other valve. So we hold this. And we got just a little slop. And the slop is right here. Check out this mini ball. So this mini ball is pretty worn out, this little ball joint. This one is pretty good. This one has some play. So this one, the uh, the saddle down here is actually in pretty good shape. Not a lot of play in there at all, but this ball joint is pretty worn out. And of course, there's nothing I can do about that short of getting an entire new setup. Um, I don't really care to do that. It doesn't matter that much. That is not a lot of play just noticeable and of course you minimize it by oiling these not a big deal at all another place that you can have problems is with the actual rotors themselves so rotors should only move in that direction they should only spin but you can check for play by holding the end here and moving it back and forth you can see just by the oil moving right there there's a tiny bit of side-to-side uh, -side play if I like rotate it in a circle. Just a little bit. That's a pretty small amount of play. Um, I've had some valves where you can move it like almost a millimeter in every direction. Then it also check up and down play. Um, I might be just a tiny bit in there. That one, up and down play can either be the valve is worn out or the backing plate underneath the valve cap is not in all the way, so it has room to move this way. And either one of those, any kind of play in the actual rotor will translate to noise and it'll play a lot worse. So you wanna have as little play as possible. This one, actually pretty good. Um, I've definitely had rotors with much more play. This one has a tiny, tiny bit that I can feel, but you guys can't even see it. And you can't hear, that's for sure. And moving up and down, there's no play at all. So these actually are in pretty good shape. It's really just this um, stupid valve saddle up here, this uh, 
paddle saddle <laughs> is totally worn out for some reason, um, just maybe because of the geometry. And then these bumpers are obviously not in great shape. You can see they're just pretty chewed up, um, worn out. I think the valves are still pretty aligned, so I haven't replaced them or anything. But if they harden up, if they get beat up, and if they disappear or get too small, then the, uh, the stop here, the stop arm, will just hit the metal, um, whatever this is called. I can't remember, bumper plate or something. It'll just hit that and make a lot of noise, and the valves will not align anymore, and it'll play a lot worse. So these valves are in pretty good shape. Just a lot of play right there. Tiny bit of play in the... Um, in this rotor. Of course, all you have to do to treat any of these symptoms is lube them. Every single part that moves should have some kind of lube on it. I use the same stuff on my um, ball bearings as I do on these. Just should be like heavy stuff. I use a ultra pure whatever ball bearing stuff. And then obviously on the rotor, I use um, ultra pure, I think normal weight. And everything about the rotor has oil on it, including the bearing up here, everything on the inside. And by that, I eliminate most of the noise, not all of it, and they play pretty well. These are in good shape. Let's show you a valve that's in really, really good shape. This is my MLR valve section. So we just test this by moving it. It's not completely silent, but like on the instrument, this is basically silent. There's almost no noise. Let's check it, we'll hold it here. Focus, there we go. This one's harder because there's no another way to set it on the table. Focus, there we go. And I'm moving it right now, I'm, really, I'm mainly moving it up and down with my fingers, but all I can sense, any play here at all, is just a little bit of the valve saddle. This has the most, or the, the least high tolerances of anything in this system. So this is probably where most of the slop is going to be in most cases anyway. But I can barely get any out of that. If we hold it the other way, let's see if I can show you guys this. Just a tiny bit. And some of the play is just the bumpers squishing down. Um, kind of can't get rid of that. But these bumpers are in great shape. The valve is in great shape. Let's check for play. Focus. There we go. Actually, just a little bit of play side to side. Um, if it didn't have any play at all, it probably wouldn't move. So that's not a huge deal. Up and down, there's no play. Just a tiny bit side to side. And it's actually less than the other valve on the 112H. And this valve plays great. I really, really like how this thing plays. I just played the Bach 42 Centennial model. And I honestly thought this was more open than the uh, Meinl Schmidt Open Flow. So... Pretty good for just what I think is an 88H valve. Let's check a different kind of valve. Let's get some light on the subject here. So these are Thayer's. Obviously things are not exactly the same, but Thayer's are just rotors that rotate this way. There you go, you can see my finger instead of this way. So if we hold this stop arm, we move this lever, I'm moving it, you can't see my finger off the screen here. Just a tiny bit of play, and most of that is in the ball joints here. These have plastic ends on them, and they slowly wear out. I fill them up with uh, ball bearing stuff every time. Obviously not a lot of noise here. These are super quiet. I have very good bumpers that are installed, um, and these valves are in great shape. And if I hold this one, so hard to show this on camera. Same thing, I'm moving it right now. There's no play in the saddle up here. This one's a little louder. Or there's not a lot of play in these ball joints either. So these are ways you can tell if your valves are making noise. I find on Edwards and uh, Shire's axle sections that are really noisy, it's usually like ball joints or something in the linkage rather than the valve itself making a lot of noise. But if the valve does make noise, it's usually because there's play, and I can't get in here as easily to show you. Um, but you can do the same thing you do on the rotors. Just check for play, move it um, side to side, and this way. Um, these had a ton, a ton of play. I'm talking like a millimeter when I bought them. Um, and so they played very badly ah, because there was just no ceiling at all. So this one especially moved 
a good millimeter back and forth, which means it, it's giving up all that space of sealage. Um, so there you guys go, uh, two different valve types and five different valves total. Um, so ways to diagnose your valve problems. Oil everything and your problems will solve themselves, basically. See you guys next time.